Good morning. Welcome everyone to worship this morning at First English Lutheran School. Excuse me. <clears throat> First English Lutheran Church. There we go. This has got a nice ring to it, doesn't it? <laughs> if you haven't done so yet, please fill out your friendship pads, send them down and back, <clears throat> and greet one another and especially any guests that we may have with us this morning. We also welcome those worshiping with us by means of our broadcast on KDIO and later on at Fairway View by tape. So we thank those making that possible today. And our broadcast this morning is sponsored in memory of Bill Howell by Donna and family. March 3rd would have been his 90th birthday, so we celebrate that. He can celebrate in heaven. We celebrate Holy Communion here this morning. All are welcome and invited to attend. If you can take communion at your home congregation, you can take communion at this congregation. We have gluten-free host and grape juice available. Let your server know if you prefer that. And if you need it brought back to you in your pews, let the ushers know and they will inform us as well. Small children, as usual, of any age are welcome to come forward and receive a blessing. We've been asked to please add the name of Michael Zinsky to your prayers for healing and comfort this week. That's Josh Zinsky's father. Please keep all those affected by the recent tornadoes in <clears throat> Nashville and other areas in your prayers. Lutheran disaster relief forms are in the narthex. They look like this. If you care to contribute to that fund, you may either do so on your own or through the church office if you would like to get credit on your giving statements. And they always do guarantee 100% of gifts go to the area needing help. We continue our season of Lent this Wednesday, hopefully with services at Fairway View at 1.30 and again here at First English at 5.30 with senior choir to follow. Immediately after worship this morning, we need one member or one representative of each of our boards to meet up in front for a very short council meeting, just a few things to approve and to act on. Uh, the choir anthem will be after the children's message again this morning because the gospel will be presented in a little different way as well as part of the sermon. Uh, the Board of Evangelism is looking for people to chair the Just for the Love of It Supper on April 15th. If you are able, please call the church office. And I promised Amy I wouldn't say my stupid joke, but there is a sauerkraut supper next, uh, or dinner, excuse me, next, Wednesday, next Sunday from 11 to 1 at Rosen School. So if you like sauerkraut, you may want to attend that. So, Are there any other announcements this morning? If not, we've been asked to abstain from even fist bumps now, so please rise for the greeting and sharing of the peace, and we'll do the wave. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always. And as I tell the kids, wave for Dave. We'll continue our worship with the order for confession and forgiveness as we find on page 116 and following. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. 
In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. We'll continue with our entrance hymn, number 660, Lift High the Cross. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With you. We continue with our Kyrie. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. And for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, and defend us, 
Hymn of pre Praise, Now the Feast. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy to the God of life. All of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praising glory forevermore. Power and riches, wisdom and might, and honor and glory to Christ forever. All of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. For God has come to dwell with us, to make a people of God, to make all things new. All of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. We join together in the prayer of the day. O God, our leader and guide, in the waters of baptism, you bring us to new birth to live as your children. Strengthen our faith in your promises that by your spirit we may lift up your life to all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading can be found on page 7 of the Old Testament in the Pew Bibles. God's call of Abram and Sarai has a clear purpose, that through them all the families of the earth would gain a blessing. As they set out on their journey, they are accompanied by promises of land, nation, and a great reputation. A reading from Genesis, the 12th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. The word of the Lord. Psalm 121 is found in the red ELW hymnal between the readings and the hymns. We will read responsively by half verse. A reading from the Psalms, the 121st chapter, beginning with the first verse. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord. The maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved. 
nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. Behold, the keeper of Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth and for more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading can be found on page 118 of the New Testament in the Pew Bibles. In the person and example of Abraham, we discover that a right relationship with God does not involve earning a reward from God, but entails trusting God's promises. Abraham is the forebear and model for both Jews and Gentiles, because we too trust that ours is a God who gives life to the dead. A reading from Romans, the fourth chapter, beginning with the first verse. What then are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who without works trusts him who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. It is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs. Faith is null and the promise is void. For, for the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. The word of the Lord. The children to come forward at this time. Okay, scoot on up so there's plenty of room for everybody. Smaller group today. That's a smaller group today. That means there's not as many of us. Got it? And how old are you going to be? Twelve? Um, ten. Ten. Okay, well, if I don't remember, happy birthday early. All right, this morning I have some things. I want you to look at them all. I've got this. I've got this. I've got these. And I've got this. What do they all have in common? Yes. They all measure something, yes. This measures like flour or sugar or something you have to have a lot of when you're cooking. This, any good carpenter will tell you that you measure twice and you cut once. This, you have to be very careful because if the recipe says you're supposed to use this much chili pepper and you accidentally put this much chili pepper in it, nobody's gonna eat what she just cooked. My mom used to use one of these. <laughs> sometimes to measure, sometimes for another purpose that anyone over the age of 20 understood immediately. <laughs> so, but a yardstick has special, special use too. So now, my question for you. How do you measure love? Love. 
can't use a tape measure or a measuring cup or a tablespoon. How do you measure love? That's a hard question this much early in the morning, isn't it? Especially when you had to get up earlier. With your heart, very good. Because when something comes from your heart, they say that you usually, if it comes from your heart, you do it with love. How can you measure the love that your parents or your grandparents or even your brothers and sisters have for you? How do you know your mom loves you or your grandma? You just know, don't you? <laughs> exactly. Yes. They say, I love you, and you should always tell people you love that you love them every day. And that's very, very important. How else do you know? Do they give you stones to eat for breakfast, or do they give you your favorite cereal? They give you your favorite cereal, don't they? Do they help you have clean clothes? Yes. Do they take you to the doctor if you're sick? or get you medicine? Yes. How can you tell your teacher loves you? If you have a question, does your teacher answer the question? Yep. Does your teacher say, good morning? You know the best way to measure love? To see how many of these you see. You have a very nice smile. And when we smile, that shows that we that care about someone, that shows that we love someone. So, how do people know you love you, that you love them? By your smile and by how you treat them, especially with kindness. One last question, how do you know that God loves you? God gives you what you need, very good. Everything that we have is a gift from God. Everything in creation, everything period, even your sister is a gift from God every day, even when you might not always see eye to eye. How else do you know God loves you? Through all the people God puts in your life, and then during the season of Lent, the one thing we all have in common is this. What is this? A cross. A cross. And this cross is made out of horseshoe nails. And that, I wear it during Lent because what the nails remind me of? Yes, when in doubt, the answer is always Jesus. When they hung Jesus on the cross with nails. So has anybody ever told you you love them this much? They love you this much? And that's what Jesus did when he stretched out those arms. He said, I love you this much. And when you tell somebody that, then you usually right after that give them a great big hug. So this week, I hope that you will let everybody know by your smile and by how you treat them that you love them the way Jesus does. Thank you very much. You may return to your seats. And we will continue with our anthem by our senior choir, How Deep the Father's Love for Us.
I'm stalling a little bit this morning while our people get down. How's that? Pulpit? Pulpit. There it is. I guess I'm not tall enough. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Jesus, we give thanks that you take us as we are. Whether we come to you by night or by day, with our sure answers or our uncertain questions, you take us, you talk with us, you guide us, and you teach us. We give thanks that you loved us so much that you came to us and spoke to us. You didn't leave us in the dark about who God is and what God expects of us. Come to us again. Love us enough to reveal yourself to us. Show us your way. Minister to our doubts and expand our faith. Amen. We haven't heard our gospel lesson yet this morning, but you are about to. And it's the familiar story of Nicodemus and meeting Jesus in the middle of the night to learn from the teacher and to learn teachings that his friends and his colleagues reject because Nicodemus was a Pharisee. And Jesus speaks to him about life and the spirit and the kingdom of God. So imagine, if you will, the following scene. It's a dimly lit marketplace, closed for the night. Jesus is waiting. He's waiting for Nicodemus, who has requested this late night secret meeting, and he's waiting for him to arrive. Rabbi, thank you for meeting me here tonight. I'm sorry it must be like this, but you understand that the others must not know I'm talking to you. I am a Pharisee. Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, because no one can do these signs and miracles that you do unless God is with them. Truly, I say to you, Nicodemus, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How can a man be born when he is old? I cannot enter a second time into my mother's womb and be born again. Truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of Spirit is Spirit. But this just isn't possible. Do not be surprised, I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it. It cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. I just don't understand. What are you saying to me? How can these things be? Are you a teacher of Israel and don't know these things? Truly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? I want to believe. That is why I'm here. I want to understand the truth. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. The Son of Man, he is the one whom we waited for, the Messiah? The one whom Moses and the prophets spoke of? Just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Must be lifted up? For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that, he would, but that the word, world through him might be saved. Life everlasting. You were speaking of the resurrection of the dead. But what you said about condemnation, we must live a righteous and holy life. He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Even the righteous? If they do not believe in your name, they are condemned? The rulers of the Jews, like myself? This is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, 
And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, and does not come into the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. I am condemned. My life is full of darkness. I thought that I was pleasing God, but now I see the truth. That is why I have come. I want to come to the light, to believe the truth. Special thank you to Terry and Kevin this morning, because that was the words of our gospel lesson. And those words, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. In this passage from John, we find some of the most familiar words in the Bible. And unfortunately, more often than not, they are taken out of context. You must believe or you are condemned. It's a pretty interesting conversation between Jesus and a Pharisee named Nicodemus. What come to Nicodemus at night? Because he had not yet been enlightened? Because that's when he had the time? Or maybe it was because he didn't want his friends to find out that he was going to see Jesus? We do know that Nicodemus tries to understand what Jesus is saying in very literal terms, in terms of the flesh. But Jesus, however, keeps pushing Nicodemus toward a new way of understanding in terms of the spirit. The fact that Nicodemus just can't fully understand makes Jesus' point even more literate and legitimate. The kingdom of God is not something we can will our way into. It's not a matter of deciding or doing all the right things and all the, at the right times and avoiding all those wrong things. Being born of water and the Spirit is God's work. It's the work of the Holy Spirit in us and on us. And the good news, it's okay if we have questions because we're not left alone with those questions. God loves us enough to engage us, to sit and explain things to us, to reveal and teach, even as Jesus taught Nicodemus, all made possible because of the grace and love of God. John 3.16, one of the most familiar verses in all of Christian scripture, it's usually shared with the intent of demonstrating the love of God for the world. It's a favorite verse of many, including Brett Korschens. It was his confirmation verse this fall. But sometimes people hear it, and it's not a word of hope. Sometimes it's a word of judgment. Many stories are told about how the word Christian is not always associated with grace, with hope, or with service, but rather that word Christian is associated with judgment, hypocrisy, hatred. Evidently, enough people have had enough negative experiences with self-proclaimed Christians that sometimes even sharing that good news of Jesus is seen as suspect. Perhaps we should always make sure that verse 17 follows verse 16. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Because our God is in the saving, the loving, forgiving, redeeming, and rescuing business. For the sake of you, for the sake of me, for the sake of the whole world, and of all, for all people. Amen. We continue with our morning offering and our offering Him.
And with the whole church, let us confess our words and our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, empower your church throughout the world in all its forms and denominations so that it may be a voice of hope for those who fear judgment or condemnation. Assure us of your faithfulness and give us confidence to share your grace with all people. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for recent signs that spring is approaching. Help us to be caretakers of all the land and water. Send compassionate workers to help in areas where flooding may be an issue. Lord, in your mercy. Guide leaders of all nations in your ways. Protect those who advocate for all who are oppressed or victims of violence. Give courage and wisdom to lawmakers, lawyers, judges, and law enforcement officers. Help us to be thankful for their work. Keep safe all who continue to serve and work to keep order in our world. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for your healing power among us. Restore hope to those who remain in the depths of depression or despair. Bring mercy and relief to those who are injured, sick, or suffer in any way. Especially do we remember those in long-term care facilities, and also Ron, Larry, Bev, Brenda, Stan, Darlene, Jerry, Mark, Gail, Tom, Marlis, Aaron, Jean, Anders, Matthew, Paulette, Lance, Daryl, Matt, Angela, Isaiah, Regine, Christian, Grayson, Bennett, Clifford, Paul, Verdon, Lori, Natalie, Jessica, Megan, Linda, Bella, Ronald, Warren, Dorothy, Terry, Kelvin, Michael, and those we name silently in our hearts at this time. Give patience and compassion to those who provide care and help us to thank them for their service. Lord, in your mercy. Please continue to bless efforts to find a treatment for the coronavirus. Send your spirit of healing on all who have been stricken with this disease and comfort the families of all who have died. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for all the ways in which you bless this assembly to be a blessing to others. Use us to be your hands and feet to our neighbors and strangers. Lord, in your mercy. As a community, we are better together. Hear our prayers as we lift up the following local businesses. Anderson Tax and Accounting, Pioneer Meat Market, Nelson Electric, and Cutting Edge Engraving. Be with each employee and patron and assure them that we appreciate them. We also pray for all of our churches, our governing and volunteer organizations, and nonprofits who contribute to the fabric of our community. Lord, in your mercy. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for now all is ready. Please be seated.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon each of you with favor and with kindness and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. And our closing hymn, In the Cross of Christ I Glory, and our Sunday school families will be excused during the final hymn.